Right then, let's talk about chapter 4.4, um, aldehydes and ketones. So we have talked about alcohol, and in the alcohol subchapter, we just, just looked at um, how they can be turned into aldehydes and ketones, especially if you had a primary alcohol, yeah? Um, yeah, luckily, one of them, the apple juice, ferment, uh, fermenta fermented apple juice, seems like it produced alcohol that you, we could detect with the method of dichromate solution, acidified one. Alright, in this part, you will learn um, aldehydes and ketones together. So things that you have to be able to do, only three of them. Given the structural formula of the aldehyde or ketone, draw the structural formula of the alcohol from which it could be prepared by oxidation and describe the necessary reaction conditions. So in alcohol chapter, you looked at uh, what sort of product you could get when you oxidize it. So this one's asking you to backtrack it, you know, what sort of alcohol was used. Yeah? Next, draw the structural formula of the oxidation products of a given aldehyde in either acidic or alkaline conditions. Something a bit different there. All right? You would get different product depending on the condition that oxidation happens. Finally, describe how acidified dichromate solution and Tollens reagent, which is ammonical silver nitrate solution, can be used to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. Something similar to what we do already. Huh? All right. Question. How can aldehydes be produced? Oxidation of alcohol to be exact what type of alcohol primary okay good how can ketones be produced oxidation of secondary alcohol all right well done what is the formula of an alcohol which can be uh, which can produce the following compounds well examples already so firstly What's the uh, thing that you got in A? What sort of family is that in? Is that ketone or aldehyde? Ketone. Ketone is correct. Yeah, A is ketone and then B is? It is? Hmm? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. It's got CHO ending. The ketone is within the chain, yeah, or CO double bond, so carbonyl group is in the middle of the chain. All right. What sort of alcohol did you need for uh, for you to make A? Yeah. So it looks like they're butanol uh, there. Well, hang on. There are four carbon chains differently. So an A. <coughs> C, 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 C. Oops. Um, on the third carbon from the left, there, there is an oxygen. So that used to look like that, right? And there wasn't any double bond. So there used to be just that. And there is another branch of carbon. And the rest should be just H's, yeah? And so C is three, C is three, CH already has three bonds, so uh, that's the structure. Yeah. Can you try naming this as well? Just to test your nomenclature. Mm. Good. So you would want to count up from right, hey? Yeah, so where would you start? Residue just says three methyl. Yeah, that's good. Butan two O. Mm-hmm. Butan two O. Yeah. Right. Butane. You can omit or you can keep E. Good. 
All right. Second one. Let's see. So right now it looks like that. So what was used? Now, if your skeletal um, formula, structural formula, confuses you, you can always draw out all the carbons and what's actually happening. So that's what it looks like uh, if you draw out um, all the carbons and hydrogens. What was used to make this aldehyde? Well, you can't change the carbon-carbon chain, yeah? Where the oxygen is attached to, you replace or you put the alcohol group, hydroxyl group back, and the rest. You just have to have hydrogens around. Yeah. Namely, what was used then? Ethanol. Ethanol. Sounds good to me. Because it's really. Two carbons, please. Hydroxyl group attached on the end, isn't it? Yeah, it's really the same as that, but it's just drawn differently. Okay. Good. All right. What we can also do with aldehydes is that uh, you can oxidize them. You can you can start from aldehyde, uh, uh, sorry, primary alcohol, oxidize it to aldehyde, and further oxidize even to get um, carboxylic acids. Now, there's a condition that if you want to make carboxylic acid, it needs to be in acidic conditions. Right, dichromate that we just used. The orange solution that was already acidified. It had acid as its uh, catalyst. Okay. Now, if you do that in alkaline conditions, underline or highlight like that, you get carboxylate ions. See the difference? So carboxylic acids will be the product if you use acidic condition. And if you use alkaline condition, Oxidation will produce um, carboxylate ion, so without H attached to. It, all right. So if you wish to produce aldehyde from a primary alcohol, the uh, aldehyde must be distilled off as soon as it is formed to prevent further oxidation. Now, this hope, uh, I hope that this is familiar. This sounds familiar to you. Maybe not for you two, <laughs> but you three at least. Uh, did this last year. Do you remember making aldi um, aldehyde? Yeah. So in year 11, in organic chemistry chapter, they make aldehyde. And I hope you remember the smell. Green apple smell. Yeah. So as soon as aldehyde was created, it came out from the other end of the flask, the, the, the chemistry, uh, the reaction was happening. Okay. And also it evaporates really well. So it was kept in where? Captured in. Hmm? Yeah, after distillation, when it comes out, do you remember what was what was under the yeah, flask? Well. There you go. Good. Because it evaporates really well, you have to keep it cool. Yeah. So that was something that was done. All right. Essentials, page two five nine. If you look at that, please. What can you find on that page? What can you find on the pa on the page? There's a image. What's the setup called? Distillation. Yeah. Distillation kit. Yeah. So distillation kit. Yeah. <laughs> what does di what does yeah. distillation do? Distill something. What, what is it? <laughs> what is distillation? 
it's a type of something. Something from out of from something. Yeah. Let's use scientific terms. Let's see if you start with the um, mixture. Yeah, you're separating the mixture. Oh. Yeah, you can get some compound out based on what? Well done. Boiling points. That's right. So distillation <laughs> separates mixture by contents <laughs> boiling points, okay? <laughs> Alright, well you get to do a bit of practice soon. Uh, but um, if you have some mixture of alcohol and water or any solution, like apple juice, yeah? And if you want to just get alcohol out of apple juice, you can do that. Because if it's ethanol, what degree again? I forgot. But it's like 87 degrees or something. A bit lower than water. Water with 100 degrees, yeah? So alcohol would be dis uh, distilled. Uh, this, that'll be distilled, right? What's I'll check the terminology again. What's the one where it's like, it goes back into itself so it makes the carbon static acid? That'll be reflux. Reflux. Yep. You will have to use that later too. So we'll look at that later. But anyway. If you want to get out the highs out of the oxidation uh, reaction chamber, you have to do distillation fa fairly quickly. Alright, All right, moving on to what you can use for oxidation process. Firstly, something that you already used. Dichromate solution. What happened to the Cr2O7? That should be lowercase there. Not lowercase, subscript. Um, so yeah, in acidic condition, a dichromate solution can be used, yeah, and the color change will be there, orange to green, also remember that too, orange to green. With apple juice, we could sort of achieve that, so I was quite happy with that. Another thing that you can use, okay, alkaline solution. What do we use? We use the reagent called Tollens reagent, okay. Now Tollens reagent allow you to have this. I remember we tried that at that. We tried and <laughs> <laughs> okay. a lot of us, yes, did fail. Hey, but we when if you use Tollens reagent and if that was successful, you can make a mirror inside of a glass vessel, whatever vessel you, you are using, and you will have kind of like mirror sort of thing happening. And this is pure silver that would make a mirror instead of a vessel. Yeah, I'm just keeping it for oh, dem oh, demonstration yeah. purpose. <laughs> no, you let the reaction happen and let the uh, silver to develop its layer. So how does that happen? You use ammonic or silver nitrate solution and you shake quite vigorously and it will uh, um, result in silver um, diamond iron and once that gets contact with um, something that can reduce itself silver will come off and silver will become a solid that will deposit as silver solid okay oxidation part what happens to aldehyde is aldehyde will become carboxylate ion, not carboxylic acid, because it's happening in alkaline condition, yeah? So H will be still off, but you will be still adding one oxygen, yeah? All right, let's write the equation. So acidified dichromate solution. So if you look at page Two five nine, the bottom part of it. Sorry, that's not that. Can I borrow essential space? So in that little space, two spaces there. I would like you to write. Where was that? Oh, 
That's a neutralization stuff. I'm already past that. Ah, there, yes. Preparation of aldehydes and ketones. So in acidic condition, you will be you will <coughs> yeah, OH. So reagents that you're using will be Cr two O seven two minus acidify add a bit of heat as we did with Bunsen burner just then. The result would be R with that carbon still there. And instead of single bond to oxygen, now it's double bond. And that. Now, that's the first step, isn't it? What's going to happen to this aldehyde? You can further oxidize it. Make it into gain of oxygen, so that's the oxidation. The dichromate solution is providing the oxygen. So the resulting product has carboxylic acid, COOH. Yeah. Whereas if you did that in alkaline condition, uh, well, let's just start with some aldehyde. R, C, O, H. Using Toland's reagent, what you will get would be R C O O with minus on it. So instead of carboxylic acid, you will have carboxylate ion. Say that again. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make carboxylic acid? Uh, no, the carboxylate, the carboxylate ion. Carboxylate ion? Yes. Would you use that ion to make to do like last year okay yeah last year what you did was actually using the uh, dichromate solution and acidified dichromate solution with heat so that was happening in the chamber but as soon as aldehyde was created we distilled that off so we didn't wait for that to be converted to carboxylic acid yeah so first step for us to make aldehyde was that yeah um, yeah so that's why I was also saying that don't put so much heat in it because that, was, that will, you know, um, create, increase the chance of aldehyde to be converted to carboxylic acid. So yeah, we had to moderate the amount of heat that we were adding. Yeah. And if there was enough heat for aldehyde to um, evaporate, then not evaporate, boil off and then get collected on the other side of the distillation, yeah, we could get that and less of that. Then yes, that's right, we did the tolerance reagent test and if you're lucky, you might have got some one streak <laughs> of yeah. mirror developing in a little test tube. Yeah. All right, 
I think next one is the last slide. No, two, second last. Uh, the reaction of aldehydes uh, with tolerance reagents. So I'll be more detailed in that. So uh, ammonical, uh, uh, ammonic, um, sorry, ammonical nitrate solution, silver nitrate solution, um, results in a silver diamine ion, which is AgNH32. But it gets reduced to metallic silver, and silver can be made to deposit on the inside inside wall of the reaction vessel as a silver mirror, like what you saw. What about ketones? What if we had ketones? Well, ketones do not undergo further oxidation, so you can distinguish the um, presence of aldehyde and ketone by using this oxidation agent. So in summary, um, aldehydes and ketones can be distinguished by heating with either of these uh, re reagents. If you, had, uh, if you had aldehyde and if you try oxidizing it, you should see a color change, orange to green. If it was ketone, there should be no change in color, the orange would stay as orange. If you use tolerance reagent and it, if it was success successful, with aldehyde, you should get silver mirror inside the vessel. If it was ketones, um, do not form any silver mirror. Yeah? That's that.